Okay, does memory speed and timing matter? I'm not an expert on this and I've seen videos with all kinds of figures, but I wanted to do my own testing because after upgrading my AMD Ryzen 2700X build, I put 32 gig of Corsair RAM at 2666 MHz and 16, 18, 18, 35. And people suggested that I needed over 3000 MHz for Ryzen. So I wanted to know, what would faster RAM actually do for my use? And would I even notice? So that's what I want to focus on in this video. What I use the system for, how it performs with that, and deciding if it's worth the extra $130 or so based on these prices. But I reached out to G-Skill, and they were kind enough to send me two sets of 32GB, 3200MHz memory. Both DDR4, 3200, and CL161818, while the other one is 141414 And again, not sponsored, but let's take a moment to appreciate just how cool this RAM looks. It's the G-Skill Triton Z Royal Silver. Amazing, kind of makes me want to build a themed PC. Keep in mind, I have never studied memory, I don't really know what I'm talking about, so if I make a mistake, please let me know in the comments. And to everyone else, don't take my opinion or test as absolute fact, just more pieces to the puzzle. But that's how you should treat all opinions anyway. Speaking of pieces to the puzzle, I don't think I've seen anyone do this sort of testing, so it should be interesting either way. I'm only testing three sets, this won't be super in depth, but I'm hoping for a general idea of what I should look for in the future. Okay, let's get to the testing. Up first is boot time, from BIOS save and exit, to Steam loaded. So the G-Skill CL14 did it in 56 seconds, G-Skill 16 did it in 59 seconds, and the Corsair 16 1 minute 14 seconds. Winner, G-Skill 14. Next starting the timer as I hit export on a video, G-Skill 14 4 minutes 33 seconds, G-Skill 16 4 minutes 34 seconds, so probably the same and Corsair in 4 minutes 37 seconds, again, probably the same. Winner, let's call it a tie, they're too close for it to matter. Now in Quake Champions, first at 3440 by 1440. For the loading times, G-Skill 14 did it in 1 minute 14, G-Skill 16 did it in 1 minute 13, so the same, and Corsair again, 1 minute 14, so the same. I then loaded a map, it also took about the same for each one, And if I look at this point on this map, it seemed the most consistent and best on the G-Skill 14, but they were all pretty much the same. So winner, again, it's a tie. And I think it's because the graphics card is actually the bottleneck, not the RAM. Which is also why I changed the resolution to 1600x900 in window mode. G-Skill 14 was getting 220 to 224 frames. G-Skill 16 got 212 to 217. And the Corsair 16 was actually getting 193 which is way below the other two. So at that resolution, the RAM becomes the bottleneck. And the obvious winner is the G-Skill 14. Next, running the benchmark in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, first at 3440 by 1440. G-Skill 14 had an average of 58 frames. But you notice it says the GPU has the lowest score by a lot. Again, that would suggest I have a bottleneck on the GPU. G-Skill 16 gives us an average of 59 frames, so one more than the 14. And again, the lowest scores are on the GPU. So didn't expect a difference here, the RAM isn't the issue. Because even the lowest spec Corsair RAM got an average of 59 frames. So winner, no winner, it's a tie. Now at 16 by 900, the G-Skill 14 got an average of 117 FPS and much closer numbers on the CPU and GPU. So less stress on the graphics card, pretty clear I should have got a better one. G-Skill 16 gets 115 FPS, slight drop but very close. Corsair got 109 average, slight drop again, really not that much difference between the memory. Winner, G-Skill 14, as expected, but not by enough to justify the extra cost, unless you really do want the best of the three. Now opening a project in FL Studio with a fair few plugins, G-Skill 14 did it in about 25 seconds, and that's the same as G-Skill 16, and even the Corsair. So again, it's a tie. So that's basically all I do on this computer, and for the most part, there isn't really much difference. What's interesting to note is that the timing does play a part in this. I didn't see anyone saying that. They were just saying get 3000 MHz, not 3000 MHz with low timing. And surprisingly, the lower spec Corsair RAM actually held up pretty well. So when you're building a computer and choosing parts, hopefully you can keep this in mind and get the memory that's going to suit you. 
I'm not a RAM expert, so I don't want to comment too much, but based on my testing, if you can afford it, get the fast memory with low timing. If not, don't stress too much. Your graphics card is probably going to bottleneck this more, or even the CPU. That's what you have to look at. You have to decide where to put your money. Say you have $1,000 to spend on these, there's no point spending $300 on memory. Your CPU and video card won't be good enough to make use of it. You could put about $300 on the CPU, $600 on the graphics card, and $100 on the memory. I just made those figures up, but you get the idea. Anyway, thanks for the suggestions to the people leaving comments. It was interesting to see the differences. And big thanks to G-Skill and Corsair for supplying the hardware. Use your links in the description if you want to help support what I do. And as always, subscribe, like and share this video, and I'll catch you in the next.